Okay, so now let's take a look at what happens when we try to do the same program, but with the Grove or Arduino board. So on here, we have a buzzer. You can see it right, right there. And the, the buzzer basically can be uh, accessed using the pulse width modulation uh, function that you find on the uh, in, in the Arduino um, support package for MATLAB. And what it does is it sends a square wave into the buzzer and, and makes a buzz. But we can modify the program that we've got right now to make that uh, work. So in order to make that happen, what we do is, again, we start off with clear all, close all. Then we identify and connect to our Arduino using the Arduino function in MATLAB using the board support package for it. We identify which port we want to access, that's which USB line that we uh, were connected to, and that will be different on, on everyone's computer. So you have to make sure to go through that process using the Arduino IDE to look at the port to figure out what that is. You can either choose Uno or Nano. And then from there, uh, the thing I recommend is that you turn off the buzzer just in case you've been debugging things and it ha maybe the buzzer is currently going. Do write PWM duty cycle, then to the board that we've named. So this is the software object uh, called my Arduino. You could call it anything you want. I'm going to access port or pin D5 that's inside. That's the one that's connected to the buzzer. And if you look at the buzzer on the Grove board, you'll see that there's a label D5. And then I send it a value of zero, which means the pulse width modulation signal, which is the square wave that goes into the board, is going to be sent to zero. All right. After that, we define what our message is going to be, just like we did before. And so I recommend that you take a look at, at what was discussed earlier in this video. We keep, uh, actually, this doesn't need to be here anymore. Okay, but we'll leave it in there. Uh, that doesn't need to be really in there anymore. And um, we need to define the size of our array. Then we have this for loop that goes through each of the rows. Then we define a while loop that goes through each of the columns in our array up here. The changes are in here, where before I was concatenating the, the, the different uh, sound values from the array. I don't need to do that anymore, so I've commented that out. And I have a write, instead, I have a write PWM duty cycle to the board, 2 pin D5, with a pulse width modulation value of 33% or 0 0.33. And I've just found that that gives a nice sound. Then I pause for a duration. What's that duration? It's the 0 0.1 that was used earlier for the sine wave and the square wave when we were making sound on MATLAB. It's that same duration. That's the definition of the duration of a, a DIT in, in, uh, in Morse code. Okay, so 0 0.1 seconds. So we do pulse width modulation for 0 0.1 seconds. If, and that's only done, if in the array that I've defined for my Morse code values, I receive or I see a value of 1. If I see a value of 0, what I want to do is turn off, so send a PWM or a pulse width modulation value of 0, into the Arduino or the Grove board, and I pause for the same amount of duration, 0.1 seconds. If I hit any of those NADA numbers, I do nothing and I increment my array column, so I keep going to the end of the row. And then at the very end, just in case the buzzer's turned on, when I'm done my uh, while loop and then my for loop, I turn off the buzzer. Let's see if this actually works. So it worked. Great. Fantastic. There you have it. Buzzing on the board too.